Here we are, it's Friday night, the last night of camp meeting. It seems like it just started. It's only 20 minutes after eight. And so we've got plenty of time for our wonderful, wonderful speaker and man of God, Brother Jerry Jones, to come and take his liberty and let's see what God will do tonight. Praise God. Oh, let's thank the good Lord for filling this house with his presence. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God. My text tonight will come from Jeremiah chapter 8. I will read verses 19 through 22. I announce that now because I didn't tell the the projector people earlier. Let me take a moment and say how wonderful it is to be in Florida, to be here at this camp meeting that has been so filled with the power and the presence of God. The anointing of the Holy Ghost has hovered on the old campground and God's power has been made available. There's no reason for you to leave tonight without having received exactly what you need from God. The sick can leave healed. Those without the Holy Ghost can live, leave filled. Those who are discouraged, distraught, disappointed can leave with their hearts lifted and their eyes heavenward those that are struggling at home with problems and difficulties. Our God is a solution, God. He's an answer, God. He's a God who cares and is available and more than that, willing to do what we need tonight. There is an explosive atmosphere in this house, has been from the very beginning, and there is no telling what God will do. Thank you, Brother Williams, Brother Varnum, District Board, for the invitation to come and be with you again. We always look forward to being in Florida. What a joy to be with my friend, Brother Mooney, and we love and appreciate him and all who took part. Wow, I'm thankful for what God is doing here. Amen. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people. Because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? I want to preach tonight. I don't think I'll preach long. But I want to preach what I think is one of the most important messages that I have ever preached. I want to preach about the solution to our problems. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for what we feel here tonight. Thank you for what you've already done in this service. We've pled the blood. We've exalted your name. We've given you praises. Every one of which you are more than worthy. We thank you for every song and every word. We thank you for everyone that's come. Those who've already danced in the spirit. And those who've already led your presence into this place. We pray an anointing now, God. Let it fall on us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Please.
be seated. A military coup occurring in one of the most vital nations on earth, Turkey, even as we speak. More than 80 dead and 25 still on life support on the French Riviera. A nightclub attacked here in Florida, leaving a wake of dead and broken lives. San Bernardino, Fort Hood, Paris. We live in times of confusion and doubt and trouble. Polls are showing that Americans are more and more giving up hope, zoning out, losing themselves in a rote routine of entertainment, emptiness, caught up in the unimportant because they fear so much what is happening in our world. I'm convinced that more than ever, this is our day. When the night is darkest, the light is brightest. And while the answer will not come from a broken mainline Christianity that has sold out their belief, their commitment, their their confidence in the ways of God to intervene in human history. There is one group left that can rise to the occasion that can in this dark hour turn on the lights. I don't just mean among us, but I believe we are the hope of the world. I believe the solution rests right here in what we feel and what is happening in our hearts. I don't believe God is done. I don't believe God is dead. I don't believe God has disappeared. I believe he's alive and he's well. I believe God is ready to step onto the stage of human history one more time. I believe God is ready to pour out apostolic revival in the 21st century. I believe it isn't going to be a pocket here, a pocket there. I believe revival can come to this generation that will demand the attention of the world. I believe it is our only hope. We need revival. Not where dogs bark and lions roar and no one is changed. That's not the kind of revival we need. We need an old-fashioned revival, a Holy Ghost revival where sinners are convicted, saints pray through afresh, and lives are forever changed, where communities are turned upside down, where the police have nothing to do, where things are forever set on a different path. We need a revival. I don't mean church growth. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we need today is an earth shaking, outpouring of the Holy Ghost that can't be put in a box. It can't be contained in a Sunday service. It can't be held in a church building. But it spills into the streets. And it flows down the boulevards. And it reaches in the schools. It gets in the businesses. It gets at the courthouse. It changes Tallahassee and Washington, D.C. I still still believe in apostolic revival. I do not want to deliver bad news. But ladies and gentlemen, 
Donald Trump can't save us. Hillary Clinton cannot save us. We can't put our trust in Congress, even a conservative one. We cannot trust in a Supreme Court, even with a so-called conservative majority. The Democrats, the Republicans, they do not have the answers. The only hope for our world is apostolic revival. We need to turn our eyes from this world and its false promise and turn them to God with a desperation born of a conviction that the only hope for our children, the only hope for our churches and our families and our friends is apostolic, Holy Ghost, earth-shattering revival. From where will such a revival come? It will come from whence it has always come. It will come from pulpits where preaching does not deal with the unimportant, with the transistory, with that which is matters today but will not matter tomorrow that does not lock itself into addressing problems that only affect time, but lifts itself to begin preaching the solutions that will lift human hearts and change human lives and touch eternity itself. My friends, if we get what we preach, it is time to preach revival. Oh, we ought to praise God just a minute. I feel his presence. Let's love him just a moment. Hallelujah. We need preaching that is dependent on the presence of God. Preaching that knows where the power comes from. Preaching that is anointed by the Holy Ghost. Preaching that is set afire by God's own word. Preaching that reaches into the pew and changes those that hear it. We need a revival like the one that came to the Kirkoshots in Scotland in 1630 when on a Monday afternoon in a soft rain as a sacramental meeting came to an end, a young pastor, or rather a young preacher, too young to pastor, named John Livingston was asked to preach what was felt to be just the ending of a great weekend. John Livingston, being young and inexperienced, preached while his congregation of 3,000 stood in that rain in the outdoors for two and one half hours. But when he got done, a novice preacher who had very little experience, but when he got done, there was an outpouring, not of rain, but of the power of God. Men and women fell prostrate on the wet ground and lay there for hours. There was miracles. There was manifestations of leaping and running and dancing. More than 500 people testified that they received a life-changing experience that afternoon. And if the records be correct, some of them began to speak an unintelligible language as the Holy Ghost fell on that Monday day in Scotland we need a revival like the one that came in 1739 to Bristol England 
when George Whitfield, who had been shut out of church after church uh, because though an Anglican priest, uh, he believed you could have a personal experience uh, with God. And when there was nowhere else to preach, he went to the mining town of Bristol. He walked out along the roads and he came to a hilltop. Standing on the hilltop, he noticed a little group of a hundred miners covered with black mining dust uh, and he began to preach the word of God to them and as he preached something happened uh, it was said tears made white furrows uh, down coal blackened cheeks uh, they went home uh, and they told their neighbors uh, and they told their families uh, and before two weeks passed uh, 20,000 people uh, were gathering uh, to hear Whitefield preach uh, a revival began that lasted through his time, uh, through the time of John Wesley uh, and is credited uh, from saving England uh, from the horrors uh, of a similar revolution like what happened in France. All I can tell you uh, is God is waiting uh, for preachers uh, that will preach uh, under the unction uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, and bring revival to our world. But it will not all happen in the pulpit. It must be met by fervency, a new fervency in the pew. Never been a revival that did not originate in the pulpit, but perpetuate in the pew. When saints caught the vision and joined in the prayer meetings and joined in the street services and joined in the personal soul winning efforts. When the saints get hungry and the saints lose themselves in the pursuit of revival, there is no end to what God can do. I challenge every soul in this house tonight to catch a glimpse of what would happen if genuine revival came to the United States of America and splashed over into Europe. I believe Islam is not strong enough to stand against the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe economic destruction cannot stay the move of the Holy Ghost. I believe people are hungry, waiting. We need a revival like the one that began on the second Sunday in February 1904 when a teenage girl named Flory Evans who had been touched by a series of sermons preached by Joseph Jenkins, her pastor, who stood in a youth service. And asked to give a testimony. Flory said these words. I'm not able to say very much today, but I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart. He died for me. It is said that the gathering became very quiet when Flory sat down. And suddenly there swept into that Welsh congregation an overwhelming presence of God. These unpretentious words from a heart hungry for God would spark a revival that within 18 months would sweep 100,000 souls into those churches. Don't tell me we wouldn't make a mark if 100,000 people were filled with the Holy Ghost in a little more than a year. Where is Flory Evans? Where is George Whitfield? Where is John Livingston? We are waiting for you. I, 
I know what you're thinking. Well, they didn't have all the truth. And I fully agree with you. I have no problem with that designation. But I cannot help but wonder if they could have what they had with partial truth. They didn't know the full power of the name of Jesus. They didn't know what it was to be baptized in Jesus' name. Many of them had never spoken in unknown tongues, though many had. But they did not understand it as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They did not have all truth, but they affected their world. In Scotland and England and in Ireland and Wales, in the great awakening in, in colonial New England, in the great revival of 1857 and 58, in the revivals that shook our world and turned it upside down, in the Welsh revival of 1904 and 1905, no, they didn't have all truth, but somehow they tapped into something. If they could have that with what they had, what can we have with what we've got? What ought we have if we have the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus? Hell ought to be trembling tonight. The kingdom of darkness ought to be afraid tonight. There is enough spiritual power in this tabernacle to turn this state upside down, to spark a revival that can change our world. Somebody needs to let loose. Somebody needs to obey God. Somebody could be the Flory Evans. Somebody could be the George Whitfield. Somebody could spark a revival that would last like John Livingston's for 200 years. It could happen right here, right now. We need somebody. want it too. When a one-eyed African-American man showed up in Los Angeles just after the turn of the century and he preached about a Holy Ghost experience that he himself had never received, they locked him out too. So some kindly couple down on Bonnie Bray Street invited him to hold prayer meetings in their cottage. He began to pray. They began to pray. And the Holy Ghost fell. And Brother Seymour got the Holy Ghost himself. The owner of the home got the Holy Ghost himself. The power fell. People began to come. The porch collapsed with their weight. He went down to Azusa Street and he rented a stable that had once been a church. And he had a revival that changed the world forever. I've heard numbers like 200 million filled with the Holy Ghost around the world. Some say it approaches half a billion people. And it started in a little Bible college in Topeka, Kansas. And it exploded in a stable on Azusa Street. My God, it's time in the 21st century for us to have Azusa and Topeka and Houston and Indianapolis and St. Louis and Memphis. We need a revival. We got to get out of going through the motions. 
We got to get out of a few nights a week calling that revival. We got to get out of our rote, our routine, our rut. We've got to decide there is a revival that will turn my city inside out. There is a revival that will fill my church and the next church and the next church and the next church. There is a revival that will change our world. Let it not be said of our generation what was said in my text. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. I think it is a word of unseized opportunities, of harvests left to rot in the fields, of barns empty, not because the rains did not come and not because the sun did not shine, but because there were no laborers to bring that harvest in. But this word is not a word of broken hearts, shattered dreams. Because here is the rhetorical questions that give me hope. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her midst? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The answer, my friends, to all of those questions is a yes, 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 yes. There is a God in Zion. There is a king in his kingdom. There is balm in Gilead. There is a physician there. We have all we need to change our world. We have all the power. We have all the truth. We have all the opportunity. We must want it passionately, obsessively. We must want it exclusively. We must pray it. We must promote it. We must preach it. And then we shall have it! Somebody reach for him right now. Somebody reach for him right now. I hear the sound of Pentecost. I hear the sound of apostolic revival. Come on, pastor, reach for it like you never have. Come on, pastor's wife, believe it like you never have. Come on, saint of God, grasp it, see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, obtain it. Revival is within our grasp. If you're back there tonight and waiting for an invitation, I invite you to come and press your way as close as you can, reaching up your hands toward God and ask him, to open the windows of the heaven and pour out a revival that we cannot contain. A revival that will change us and change our communities and change our country and change
change our world. We need revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands, everybody. Begin to cry out to God tonight. Begin to call on Jesus with everything you have. We need revival tonight. We need the Holy Ghost tonight. We need the power of God tonight. Come on, sing this song out to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every soul lifted up to God. Every cup lifted up until it's filled today. We need His presence today. We need His anointing today. We need His power today. We need this revival that will change our world. That will change our state.